Oh, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Whoa. What y'all booing for? What you mad at? Oh, you little team lost. Build a bridge. Get over it. Rev Eddie here. Hey, there's our warriors for Jesus. Any more warriors for Jesus out there? Come on, warriors! <laughs> we will never quit. We will never bend. We will never break. We will not shy away. We will not compromise. This word of God, not one comma, not one period. We will never compromise our walk with the Lord. But we will do what God created us to do until our last breath. Come on, warriors! Hallelujah! So exciting. Today we're going into Matthew chapter 18, and I'm telling you, it's on fire! Somebody get excited out there. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, me and the Lord had a good time this morning. And I'm telling you, it's just so awesome when you got the time to spend alone with the Lord. See, they lying to y'all. They tell you that you only have one offensive weapon, and that's this word of God. Not true, not true, not true. We got a lot of weapons to deal with this enemy of our souls. Amen. Your praise is a weapon as the de demons and the devil are attacking you. Firing their fiery darts over the hedge of protection that the Lord already has around you. And you know the Lord is protecting you. Otherwise, we would not be here. Glory be to God. <laughs> We're here. So God is protecting us. If the devil had his way, he would have taken us out a long time ago. Come on. So when he's firing his darts over that hedge of protection that the Lord has around you, you can back that enemy off with your praise. Glory be to God. It's a weapon. You're launching spiritual missiles of praise back into the enemy's camp, and praise chokes the devil's neck, the Bible says. So send back that praise. Just get to praising when you're under attack. The walls come down with a shout. Glory be to God. You've also got your prayer life. Come on, somebody. That's another powerful offensive weapon to back that enemy up. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And you got your word. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. So, along with the Lord this morning, I asked him if he had a word for all of you who he drew here. And he does. He said, keep going. Keep going. He's very well aware of each and every one of your circumstances and situations. He says, just keep your faith. Keep your faith in him that he's going to work it out, fix it, and bring you through all of it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> A shout out to all of you that are following on YouTube and Facebook. We thank God for each and every one of you. And you keep coming back. You do know we preach in the true word of God over here, right? But yet you keep coming back. And we thank God for all of you. We are in this to win this together with you and you. Why are you looking at me like that? Yes, you are the best part of this ministry. Glory be to God. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for personal prayer, perhaps you want to chat something out, get something off your chest, testify to the goodness of God, I'm available. Come over to Facebook and search Rev Eddie Wiggins. Now on Facebook, Rev Eddie is one word, no space, no dash, no dots, no periods, just Revetti Wiggins messaged me 
We'll exchange numbers. That way we can talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while in our hearts that are almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, all-caring, all-powerful God is going to work it out. Glory, glory, glory. A shout-out to our favorite island in the whole wide world, the island of Mindanao over there in the Philippines and all the beautiful people there from Dipalog City to Palanco to Dipaton City to Barangay, Districts 1, 2, and 3, and all the way up into those mountains. We just thank God for all of you. We love you so much. Can't wait to get back in your arms. We miss you so much, and we want to say thank you for following this podcast brought to you in a broadcast by our favorite DJ in the whole wide world, DJ Joe Ryan. Oh, yes. Thank you, Joe. And good spinner, DJ RF. Glory be to God. And one of our favorites, Woody Boy, a.k.a. also known as Dr. Love. And it's time for the healing hour on the mighty Kiss FM Polanco 90.1 on your FM radio dial. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, for these warriors for thy kingdom, O oh Lord. Continue to use them for your glory and the salvation of souls. Keep your mighty hand of protection on them all in all they do and everywhere they go and provide for their every need, Lord, with an abundance left over in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep the mighty Kiss FM Polanco lifted up in our prayers. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Let's keep Pastor Nelia and her powerful ministry over there, same island, from Dibalog City all the way up into those mountains, preaching his true gospel of Jesus Christ with all who will listen that they too may be saved, working with Pastor Mary Jane Pilare, they are a dynamic duo for Christ's kingdom. Let's keep them, their ministry, the orphanage, all the children, everyone they're ministering to. And Pastor Nelia's son, Benny, lifted up in our prayers. We just love our little Benny so much, and he has grown up into a big, full-size warrior now. And we're praying for provision for his college education, then he may graduate with honors and be all that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ created him to be. Let's keep them all lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Let's continue to pray for the extension of this ministry. I'm telling you, we got pastors all around the world now over there in beautiful downtown Australia, just lighting that continent up with the Holy Ghost. Senior Pastor Charlotte Harding, her husband, Pastor Dale Harding, Senior Pastor Clayton, and Pastor Vivian, along with Pastor Tamana, and I think they've made some more pastors since they got back. We just thank God for them. Let's keep them and their ministries over there in Australia lifted up. In our prayers, glory be to God. Let's continue to pray for Samanga and her ministry over in Zambia, Africa, as well as Minister Deborah Atwell on that beautiful hot smoking island of Trinidad, Tobago, just on fire for the Lord, preaching this true gospel of Jesus Christ with all who will listen on that island that they too may find salvation. And we want to continue to pray for her niece-in-law. Lord Jesus, she needs a miracle in her body, Lord. Touch her body right now. Heal her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in every area of her body, whole and complete right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for her and send a shout out to our fellow warrior, Sam Knight. Hey, Sam, God bless you. We thank God for you all you are doing for Christ's kingdom, this ministry, and the public whom you are still serving. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's continue to pray for our spiritual mentors. Coach, uh, 
coaches and teachers, Coach Randy Lowe, his lovely wife, their ministry, family, relatives, and loved ones, along with Coach Gaga. Coach G, as some of us call him, his lovely wife, Kay, their ministry, family, relatives, and loved ones. I got something from Coach this morning to bless us. He says, fill your mind (laughs) with God's word, and you will have no room for Satan's lies. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Coach. Let's continue to pray for protection and provision for our brother in Christ, Rod. Hey, Rod. <laughs> Let's keep my sisters, Karen and Jan, my auntie Annette, my niece Elena, and my nephew Michael lifted up in our prayers, along with our beloved Gail and Tex. Oh, we just thank the Lord for his mighty hand of protection upon Gail and Tex. Tex was in a horrible, horrible accident night before last. They spent the entire day in the hospital searching and testing and scanning, looking for anything that may have occurred on Tex. And he is fine. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, the car don't look so good, but Tex is fine. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, they got a situation that we're praying that you would glorify yourself through this situation and bless them beyond their imagination in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's continue to pray for Gail in Texas. Uh, Miracle grandson, Mateo, totally healed, restored, and delivered in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for and send a shout out to our fellow warrior, Jay Clark. Hey, Jay, God bless you. We thank God for you and all you're doing for Christ's kingdom and this ministry. You are truly a blessing to each and every one of us. Let's continue to pray for Cheyenne and all of her children, as well as Miss Helena Gore and her entire family and our beloved Ladera Turner. We thank God for you, Ladera. You are such a blessing to each and every one of us. We just love you and your family so much. And we thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand and protection, provision. Oh, Lord, a miracle in her finances, deliverance and healing throughout this entire family. Thank you, Jesus, especially for her sister and her miracle granddaughter who we have grown to love so much. Lord Jesus, let only your mighty and perfect will be done in that miracle granddaughter's life in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and daughter. We shall continue to pray for all of our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, and all of our nieces and nephews throughout this ministry, this country, and this world. They truly need our prayers. Let's give a shout-out. Keep praying for our fellow warriors, <laughs> Scott Woodall. <laughs> Got a text from uh, Scott this morning. He said it's tough. It's tough going, and it ought be. You see, when we're reaching out and Lord is stretching us and has us doing things, you see, it's a step-by-step. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It's a step-by-step, and as obstacles come up, you see, we keep the faith and we just keep going. This is a faith-growing situation, and we want to continue to pray for Scott Woodall, his wife, and this situation that the Lord, would give them victory in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory be to God. Let's continue to pray for our young warrior, Jesse, and all his fruit smoothies. We just thank God for you, Jesse. We thank the Lord for all he's doing in your life and your family's life. 
And we want to continue to pray for his family, especially his uncle and mom, that they too would fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve him for the rest of their days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And now our beloved Ms. Quiet Storm, Ms. Adrena Turner. We thank God for you, girl, and all you are doing for Christ's kingdom, this ministry, and all of those the Lord has placed before you. And we speak healing power into your lives, your mom, your dad, all your family, relatives, and loved ones. Miracles of healing right now from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet in every area of your bodies, whole and complete right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name and a miraculous and speedy recovery for your dear mommy in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep my boy Brian lifted up in our prayers along with our beloved Anna from Alabama. We love you so much, girl. We thank God for you. You are truly a blessing to each and every one of us in this ministry and for Christ's kingdom. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. We thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection upon Anna her lovely husband, their beautiful daughter Valerie, and those precious grandchildren, Atlas and Odie. Lord, let only your mighty and perfect will be done in each and every one of their lives. Healing power right now upon this entire family, totally healed from head to toe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, rehabilitation and restoration for Terry like the world has never seen, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, Bring him home soon in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Anna's son-in-law son in law, lifted up in our prayers for his salvation, healing, and deliverance. Let's continue to pray hard for my spiritually adopted family, Michelle, my girl, Angelina. We got to pray hard for Angelina, Gilbert, and Mia. Lord, shield and protect them in all they do, everywhere they go, and let only your mighty and perfect will be done in each and every one of their lives. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for our fellow warrior, Brian Goodson. We thank God for you, Brian, and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. You are truly a blessing to each and every one of us, and we thank God for you. Let's continue to send out this prayer, Scott's prayer. <laughs> the day he felt it, I felt it too. Lord Jesus, we know you're coming, and we know you're coming soon for your people. Delay your coming just a little while longer, Lord, that we may have more time to save more people for your kingdom. We want to fill heaven in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Jabos from YouTube, healed in the hip right now in Jesus' name, and our fellow warrior, Jahan from England. We thank God for you, girl, and all you are doing for Christ's kingdom. What a blessing you are to me and everyone in this ministry. I just love you so much. I thank God for you and this powerful ministry that the Lord is doing through you. You've got a worldwide ministry looking for souls and we thank you, Jesus. Glorify yourself through this ministry. You have her doing many souls saved for God's kingdom in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Keep going, young warrior. Keep teaching. And healing power. Pray hard, y'all. Miracles of healing upon Jahan and her mother right now from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies, whole and complete right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Let's continue to pray for our dear fellow warrior, Derek. <laughs> Thought I'd try to trip up the kids there. Amen. They had their mouths full of oils, double stuff. Amen. We thank God for you, Derek, and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. You are truly a blessing to each and every one of us. And we want to pray for Derek, his beautiful wife, 
his lovely children, especially that about-to-be four-year-old toddler. And Derek thanks each and every one of you for your prayers. He's seeing miracles every day happening in that young toddler's life. And we want to pray for his entire family, especially his mom and his uncle. I'm sorry, his mom and brother, that they too would fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve him with all of their hearts for the rest of their days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And our fellow warrior, Ekina. From Houston, Texas, we just thank God for you and all you are doing for this ministry, Christ's kingdom. You are such a hard worker, a true warrior for Christ's kingdom, and we thank God for you. You are truly a blessing, and we stand with you for your healing and your deliverance in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Glory! A shout out! To Ken and Cindy, we thank God for the both of you and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. We thank God. Thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand upon Ken and Cindy and their marriage and their children, family, relatives, loved ones, their home, their animals, their places of employment, and their finances. Lord, pour them out a miracle in their finances that will knock their socks off in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Coach G's friend, Kristen, lifted up in our prayers. She needs a miracle in her body, a miracle of healing. We speak life and not death in Jesus' name totally healed from head to toe in jesus precious and mighty name and coach coach g's uncle wesley for a miraculous and speedy recovery in jesus precious and mighty name we're going to continue to pray against the spirit of anger and rage throughout this ministry each and every one of our homes family relatives loved ones and our workplaces and let's not forget pastor larry and his powerful ministry over there in dipalog city his beautiful wife his lovely daughters gyra micah angelica angelica healed in her heart right now in jesus name micah provided for law that she may continue her education graduate college with honors and be all that you created her to be and lord you know this family bless every need with an abundance left over in jesus precious and mighty name and the church said together amen amen and amen who's ready for a word come on warriors for jesus out of those war rooms with your war clothes on armed and extremely dangerous dangerous rooted and booted in this word you got your swords turn those swords to matthew chapter 18 and i will be reading out of the new living translation for your ease amen let's remind ourselves where we were yesterday let's back up to uh Oh, verse 26, and come on into chapter 18, starting at verse 1. Amen. So from chapter 17 yesterday, uh, le- actually, let's catch the whole thing. Let's back up to verse 24, catch that whole paragraph so we know exactly, because coming in the middle there, the last couple of uh, verses, We might not catch that and remember where we were yesterday. So verse 25 from yesterday says, I'm sorry, 24, on their arrival in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, Peter replied. Then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, What do you think, Peter? Do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered? They tax the people they have conquered, Peter replied. Well then, Jesus said, the citizens are free. However, we don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the first 
fish you catch, and you will find a large silver coin. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. Today's lesson, chapter 18, starting at verse 1, says, About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? (laughs) Here they go. (laughs) We got a rambunctious crew following Jesus. Amen. So, we know from the other Gospels that they got to fussing and arguing and fighting over who would be the greatest. Matthew brings it, and their question is, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? So they're looking for not the kingdom of heaven and what impact it will have in this world for all who place their faith in Christ. Oh, no. (laughs) That's not where they're at mentally right now. You see what I'm saying? They're looking for positions in Christ's kingdom, like to exalt oneself. Now, that's not the humility that they've seen as they've followed Jesus for over three years now, you see? So they haven't quite gotten there, and Jesus is going to remind them how they should approach this a better way. Come on, somebody. Amen? And so (laughs) verse 2 says, Jesus called a little child to him. Come here, little Johnny. (laughs) My boys is having issues right now. Come here. Let me use you as an example. And in my mind, doesn't say it in Scripture. And you can share what's on your mind about this scene as it comes across the screen as we dive into this world. I see the Lord sitting down, comfy, comfy like. And he calls his child over, puts him on his lap, kind of scruffs his hair. You know what I'm saying? And let's reread to Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Verse 3, then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sin." That's the very first thing out of the Lord's mouth. And that's what we should be gleaning today as we're preparing for his return, preparing ourselves to go through this tribulation, the walk we need to have. We need a life where we have turned to earn the past tense. We've turned from our sin. And we want in our hearts, minds, and spirits to become like little children. Listen to what the Lord tells these power-hungry, position-hungry disciples. I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sin and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. You worried about position, you ain't even going to get in. Okay? Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children. Well, what is it about little children that Jesus is emphasizing? Little children trust. Are you with me? They trust. You can take a little child, set him up on top of the refrigerator, and tell him, jump in my arms. I'm going to catch you. And that child will do it. And it will become so much fun, they're going to want to do it again and again and again. That's that childlike faith. You see? But yet, 
as adults, we see the struggle with the disciples, a struggle in their understanding of Jesus, a struggle in their faith in Jesus. They've gotten into some pretty precarious situations following Jesus, you see. And many times, Jesus had to question their faith. Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> you see? And so it's faith. Look what the Bible said. Now, I want to stay here in Matthew, but this just came in my spirit. It is impossible. Oh, you act like it's not impossible. <laughs> It's impossible to please God without faith. We gotta trust him. We have to trust him in all we do, no matter what we see, no matter what's happening, no matter how it feels, no matter what others say the situation is, what did God say that situation is? He said it already what that situation is, and it's right here in this word. And that's why we say it every podcast. Read your word, read your word, read your word. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. Get it in you. We've got to trust God, no matter what the situation no matter what the circumstance. And we need to trust him with everything that we are and with everything in our lives. You see? A complete and absolute trust is what's required by the Lord. Not just a little bit of trust, not a little bit of faith, with everything we are. We got to trust him. Lord, I just got this letter in the mail, and it don't look good, Lord. I, I can't fix this. I'm going to give this to you and trust that you're going to work this thing out. Lord, my babies are sick. I don't know what to do. I done gave them the uh, little cough syrup or whatever. They still got a high fever. Help me, Lord. I trust you with my children, with their health. I trust you with my husband. I trust you with my wife. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my job. I trust you with my residence. I trust you with everything, Lord. It's an absolute in every area of our lives trusting God that he knows best what we need he knows what we need better than we do. We think we know, but he knows for sure. It's not a thought, and it's not an afterthought. He's got a plan for each and every one of us, and he allows situations into our lives, our circumstances, our situations to strengthen our faith because it's going to take absolute faith to get through this tribulation. Come on, somebody, shout. So every battle, every circumstance, every situation that we've gone through in life, horrible as they may be, were to prepare us for today, these last days, as we are going to make it. Through this tribulation, we will endure to the end, like the Lord said, and we will see him coming on the clouds. Come on, we win it, and we win it together. Come on, let's get back into this word. See, stop it. That was you, Ladera, doing that fist bump, trying to get me to preach. I didn't come in here to preach. We just trying to do a little teaching. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> So he says, let's get this in our spirit. Verse 3, then he said, I tell you the truth. So you can take this to the bank unless you turn from your sins. That old man got to die. And that new creature got to come alive, filled and empowered by the Holy Ghost. Unless you turn from your sins 
and become like little children, you will never. Now, there's no loophole here, y'all. You will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble, come on, somebody, is humility that the Lord loves. He was a humble servant. We're following him. We're picking up his characteristics. The Holy Spirit living in us, working the act of sanctification, makes us more and more like Christ. We get his character, how he operated, how he acted, how he moved in certain situations. And he was humble. So we got to be humble. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And I can just see, can you see the little child sitting on his lap? You know what I mean? Just relishing in the moment, quiet, perhaps listening himself, you see? And so, look at where the Lord takes off from this. Because you got to remember, this was a society that hated women with a passion and children even worse. They hated women and children because they couldn't get anything from their children. The children just need, need, need. Sick of y'all. Get in that field and get to work. You see? They hated children. And they hated women even more. They even had a song, I'd rather be a dog than a woman. This is a corrupt society Jesus is ministering to. Watch verse 5. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this, on my behalf, now some of your translations may read, uh, I had that, uh, in my name. That's out of the Greek. Anyone who welcomes a little child like this in my name is welcoming me. Now this coincides with where Jesus says, what you do for the least of mine, you do for me. When we do for children, they're not gonna they, they're not capable of paying you back. You see what I'm saying? So you're not looking for anything in return except a love for God and obedience to you, you see, and a willingness to learn and grow and become all that they can be. But they can never err ever. Shirley Caesar had this song where this child went to her sister and wrote a note that he wanted to be paid for taking care of little brother, little sister, cleaning the yard, taking out the trash, doing his homework. And she told him, look here, look here, little man, okay? The love I poured out on you, I carried you in my womb for nine years, nine months, no charge. That's the name of the song, No Charge. You got to check it out if you don't know it. She said, I stayed up with you all night praying when you were sick. No charge. I fed you, I clothed you, raised you up right. No charge. You see, it was good. Look at verse 5. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf or in my name is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones, who trust in me to fall into sin. Let's stop mid-sin. Because I'm looking at the horrors happening all around this world today. As children are being trafficked. As children are being harmed. And you know my testimony. The brutality. The horror that I had to endure from my mother. She tried to kill me, take me out of this life, 
starting at age two, I know the pain in the child's heart that's being abused. A lot of you. I know your testimonies, girl. You know who I'm talking to. I'm looking right at you. <laughs> yes, you. I'm looking at you. Yeah, you just wiped your mouth. Get the crumbs from that sandwich off your mouth. I know your testimony. I know what they did to you. And it was horrible. And I know you two over there and the horrors you have had to endure from the time you were born. I know so many of your testimonies and the horrors that occurred in your childhood. Look at what Jesus says about this. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better. A whole lot better. Listen to the Lord. It would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Now, a millstone was that limestone wheel they would carve, and they put a hole in the middle and put the uh, wood pole through it, and it would go on a turnstile, and it would be either pushed by slaves or pulled by cattle. That was how they did the wheat. You see? Separate the wheat from the chaff. That millstone weighed 2,000 pounds. Now to be thrown into the depths of the sea with a 2,000 pound millstone wrapped around your neck, you going head first. Oh, don't act like you ain't going to go head first. <laughs> head first into the depths of the ocean. And do you know the speed with which a 2,000 thousand pound millstone is going to move downward okay you're flying that means your body is going through these pressure changes and exploding while you're alive now if you can imagine that the lord said it would be better catch what the lord is saying it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea. He ain't even telling you what's truly going to happen. But if that's better, okay, the Lord ain't playing with his children. And I think that because of the horrors I had to endure, and then coming into ministry, you see, my heart's always been with the children. Growing up in L.A. and the horrors happening to children all over Southern California, ministering in the juvenile hall, crying with them, hearing their horror stories, stories sharing mine. The youth Bible study for 14 years, watching kids grow up and grow out of this program and go on into college. You see, I've always had an, a warm, loving affinity for all the children. You see, praying for them day and night that they would not suffer at the hands of some of these sick, demented demon-possessed people, you see? And so, watch this. The Lord's not done. Verse 7, what sorrow awaits the world? He just described one <laughs> with a millstone riding your neck. He said, what sorrow awaits the world? Because it tempts. People to sin. Temptations are inevitable. They come because we got an enemy of our souls, the devil and his demons tempting us. Temptations are inevitable, but, but what sorrow 
awaits the person who does the tempting. And there's too, too many of them in this world today ready to do harm to others. So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. They're going to burn in hell, y'all. And having been there, y'all know my testimony. Okay, there is no relief. There is no end. It is for forever. And this pain is indescribable. They don't have words in any language to describe the pain of hell. I call it supernatural pain for lack of a better word. We don't feel pain like this on earth because we have a shock system. There's no shock system in hell. I felt that fire from my toes to the top of my head. And it gets worse by the moment, day by day, worse and worse for forever. Listen to the law. Verse 8 again. So if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand or one foot than to be thrown into eternal fire with both of your hands and feet. Now, he's not saying literally cut off your limbs to stop sinning. But what he is saying, you need to cut that sin out of your life because you got a burning hell waiting for you. Are you with me? Got quiet out there. <laughs> Amen. He says in verse 9, and if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. That's how terrible sin is. That you just dig your eye out of your skull and throw it away. It would be better to do that and, and stop sinning. You see? That's how bad sin is and that's how bad hell is. And he doesn't want us there. Listen to the Lord. It's better to enter eternal life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Now, some of your Bibles may read out of the Greek, the Gehenna of fire, just another name for hell. Amen? And so, let's go to the study guide on what we've read so far. Amen? Jesus, no, we've got one before that, from Mark's gospel, and that's where Jahan has been totally ministering. <laughs> and I told her, we're going into Mark next, amen? Love the gospel of Mark. From Mark's gospel, we learn that Jesus precipitated this conversation. What conversation? Where the disciples are fussing with one another about who would be the greatest, Amen. From Mark's gospel, we learn that Jesus precipitated this conversation by asking the disciples what they had been discussing among themselves earlier. And you can find that in Mark 9, 33 and 34. Another one for verses 1 through 4. Jesus used the child to help his self-centered disciples get the point. We are not to be childish like the disciples arguing over petty issues, but childlike, with humble and sincere heart. Uh-oh. <laughs> Put down your sandwich. <laughs> Put down your drink. Amen. <laughs> Here comes a stiff finger right in the rib cage from the study guide. Study guide has a question for us. In what areas of your life do you tend to struggle with childishness? Childishness. In what ways are you making progress with childlikeness? Oh, sturdy guy trying to preach. I got another one for uh, verses 3 and 4. 
The disciples had become so preoccupied with the organization of Jesus' earthly kingdom that they had lost sight of its divine purpose. Instead of seeking a place of service, oh, watch a steady guy. Instead of seeking a place of service, they sought positions of advantage. It is easy to lose our eternal perspective and compete for promotions or status in the church, it is difficult but healthy to identify with children, weak and dependent, people with no status or influence. I have another one for verse 6. Children are trusting by nature. Because they trust adults, they are easily led to faith in Christ. God holds parents and other adults adults accountable for how they influence these little ones. Jesus warned that anyone who turns little children away from faith in him will receive severe punishment. Glory be to God. Study guide or preach it. <laughs> we have another one for verse 7. Jesus warned the disciples about two ways to cause others to sin, tempting them and neglecting or demeaning them. As leaders, we are to help young people or new believers avoid anything or anyone that would cause them to stumble in their faith and lead them to sin. We must never Take lightly the spiritual education and protection of those young in age or young in the faith. So little ones has been interpreted throughout the centuries both ways for not only little children, but new believers. Amen? We have one more for verses 8 and 9. But we didn't read 8 and 9. So let's stop, okay? Let's stop right there and get back into Scripture. So in verse 10, now he's still got this child sitting on his lap, tickling him behind the neck or the ears, right? And the little kid is just hugged up to the Lord. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. Now, that's a warning. Don't you look down on these children. That's what they were doing in that society. Look how God always warns. He always warns us when we're about to go down that wrong road. Example, I remember he warned Israel when they were getting ready to go into the promised land led by Joshua. Don't you forget. Oh, it's what the Lord told him. Don't you forget who gave you this incredible land of milk and honey. Homes already furnished. Cabinets already full. Fields ready to harvest in your backyard. Don't you forget who gave this to you. And what was the first thing Israel did? They forgot. <laughs> Ended up in sin. And back in bondage. It amazes me. Right? The Lord brings them out of slavery. With the promise. Of their own land. A land flowing with milk and honey. Brings them out of slavery. Leads them. Up to this land. <laughs> and we know. They refused to go in. So folks had to die. And then when they finally get in, they go back into slavery in the promised land, the land of milk and honey, because of their rebellion against God, their disobedience to God. <laughs> kind of like Bubba, it just don't make no sense. 
Oh, who woke you up? Sit your sorry self down and open up that word. Wipe up that slobber on the table. He was just asleep. Sorry about that, y'all. That boy ain't well. They wasn't well. Are we well? We better get well if we ain't. Okay? Because we're at the end of human history as we know it. His tribulation is coming and it's coming soon. And we want to be sold out. 100% his. Warriors. His last army, his bride, his church, we want to be all we can be in him, empowered by him, that we will get through this tribulation, that we will endure to the end and see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming on the cloud. Hallelujah. Verse 10 again, beware. That's a warning. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. Now, I've been in churches, y'all. You can put it in the comments because y'all been in churches too. And church folk, man, they ain't no joke, okay? And I've seen them, witnessed them with my own eye looking down on children. Because they fidget and they ain't acting right. They not quiet enough. You see, not even knowing what these children had gone through. For example, you see, <coughs> we had done some work in the community in which we were working with battered women with children. And we just poured our hearts at their facility blessing them, ministering to them and the children. We had a Bible Olympics for a week there. It was beautiful. They wanted to come to our church. I invited them and told them, please, they had a bus. And there were so many women and kids coming to our church. I would go up. I had to get up an hour earlier to be there at the facility to fill my car with them to make sure all of them had that opportunity to come. Now, these kids watch their mamas get the snot beat out of them. These kids are in tears in their mama's arms as mama's bleeding from the face, black eyes, busted lip, busted nose. These kids had been homeless with their mothers, living in cardboard boxes, Trunks of abandoned cars, back seats of abandoned cars, park benches on cold L.A. nights. Oh, these kids done seen a thing or two. Things we don't ever want our children to see, but they witnessed this. But you want them to sit down and act like normal kids who ain't never seen this? I had to whisper in my pastor's ear, no. These ain't ordinary children. They've been places. They've seen things. You're not going to get these to act like children who haven't been through that. No. Let's show some leniency here. Do you know that with the looking down on these mothers and kids that I witnessed, we lost them all. Every mother refused to come back and took their kids with them. What a blessing it would have been to minister this word of God to these precious little children and these poor mothers that had been harmed and hurt so much. Couldn't come to pass because of the looking down. You don't look like us. You don't act like us. They ain't been through what you've been through. Have a heart. Have some humility. Have some compassion. They couldn't do it, y'all. Lost every one of them. There must have been about 40 or 50 of them. Hungry for Jesus. Hungry for this word. But the looking down drove them away. 
Listen to what the Lord says. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. As I'm ministering in many churches around the country, around the world, I would see the mothers with their young babies and the baby get to crying and whining and they want to, uh oh, <laughs> right? And want to grab the child and go out in the parking lot. No, that was me. No, mother, come on. Come on up here. Come, with, come up here with me. Get in this podium area. Come under this anointing with that child that's about to let loose. And watch the Lord. Watch the Lord. The Spirit of God, the anointing of God, interrupt in that child. Don't you dare leave. What we're speaking, you need to hear. And the spirit in that child is as old as the spirit in us. That spirit need to be fed just like that baby's crying to be fed now. No, you just come on up here. Here, take my chair. Hold that baby. That baby will quiet down, and they would. We don't want to drive them out ever. We want to draw them close to the Lord. You see, I've been in churches where before the sermons preach, some of y'all put in the comments, you may be familiar with this, they usher all the children out to go color, <laughs> right? And get white glue all over their church clothes as they're pasting things, right? Doing artsy craftsies, but you just remove them from the anointing and this anointed word. Now, some churches I've been at, they got an intercom. They have a speaker in the children's room where they can hear the sermon. But them kids are playing and laughing and giggling and eating double stuffed Oreos and doing what kids do. You took them out. Why did you take them out in my heart? Now, you don't have to agree with me, but in my heart, I ain't worried about kids running around, making noise, playing, doing whatever they're doing. But leave them here under the anointing of God where the power is. That's just my heart. Amen? I'm just sharing my heart. Let's look at what the Lord said. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you, it's important, y'all. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Now, I have an asterisk there for verse 10, okay? Now, some manuscripts add a verse 11. Now, in the New Living Translation, there is no verse 11. And verse 11 may be in your translation, and it would read, and the Son of Man came to save those who are lost. Now, you can go to Luke 19 and 10 and compare the difference between Matthews. Amen? So, it says here, let's reread that, for I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. And yours may go on, and the Son of Man came to save those who were lost. What is that telling us? Children got angels, y'all. Not an angel, as so many have quoted. This child got an angel. No, he got more than one. Listen to what the Lord said. For I tell you that in heaven their angels. Now what children got angels for? Protection from the enemy. That devil and demon. And people. And this has always been my prayer for the children. Lord Jesus, protect them from us. The adults who are these children's worst 
nightmare. It's the adults that are abusing and harming the children. Killing them. Doing all kind of things to them they ought not do. It's the adults that are the worst nightmare of the children, and it ought not be that way. And I said, Lord, give me a platform where I can share your love for the children. They must not know how much you love each and every child by the things that they're doing to them. You open up a window of opportunity, Lord, and I'll preach it. I'll teach it. Because I know your love for the children. See, I felt it, y'all. I wrote a book, something special. I believe you can get it up on uh, Amazon. It's an e-book. Maybe I haven't released it. I think I might need Miss Turner, Adrena, to help me with that one. But I woke up in tears one morning. I dreamed of a little girl hand in hand with the Lord. And her love for him had me in tears. And feeling his love for her had me on my knees in tears. Woke up crying. It's an amazing, powerful, unlimited, holding nothing back love that Jesus has for his babies, his children. And I felt it. And I'm telling you, it must have been that much, just a pinky nail full of love that brought me to my knees in tears. I know he didn't let me have it full unleashed, his love. His children are nothing to play with in God's sight. People should, ought not do that. We know they are. And it's horrendous and it's demonic what they're doing to these children. But they're not to be played with just like God ain't to be played with. It's because they don't know the love that God has for each and every one of his babies and children that they're able to do the horrendous crimes they do against the children. Listen to the Lord. For I tell you that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Why do you think that is? Because they're reporting what's going on with each and every child to God himself. God has his angels protecting his children. You see, this is a serious thing. Look at verse 12. If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away. What will he do? This is in red, y'all. Gather this into your heart. Everything we've been reading today has been in red. Catch this. Won't he leave the 99 others on the hills and go out? To search for the one who is lost. Now some might think in their mind. I heard you. Some might think in your mind. Well now the 99 will scatter. No they won't. That's why the shepherd is able to leave. The 99. Because they're well trained. And they're not about to run away. It's the one who did. Who is now in extreme danger because it did. It's not in the safety of the pasture. It's not in the safety of the eyesight of the shepherd. It's not in the safety of the flock. It has ran away and it is now in danger of losing its very life. And this shows you the love of God. Every life is important to the Lord. Everyone. Let's read this. Verse 12, if a man had a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others on the hills and go out to search for the one that is lost? And verse 13 says, 
And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice over it more than over the 99 that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my Heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. That's it, how important new believers are to the body of Christ and children. Little ones works for each one. That's how important it is. It is not my Heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. Can you feel the Lord's love today? For you, for your children, your grandchildren, your nieces and nephews, your great-grandchildren. Oh, it's an incredible, indescribable love. I can't even begin to describe what I felt that had me on, on my knees in tears when I felt the love that Jesus has for his children. This is powerful. It's so powerful, he's assigned angels to watch over them. Now, as that children, as that child grows, where do you think the angels go? They stay with the child. So when the child grows up, you've got angels watching over you. That's how much the Lord loves you. Them angels ain't going nowhere. You got angels. Come on, somebody. He's got an indescribable love for each and every one of us. Know that in your heart. And we are commanded to love each other like he loves us. We are in this to win this together. Come on. Now, Let's go to this study guide on what we've read so far. Amen. For verses 8 and 9, study guide said, we must remove stumbling blocks that cause us to sin. This does not mean to cut off a part of the body for the church. It means that any person, program, or teaching that threatens the spiritual growth of the body must be removed. That's why I've always said, podcast after podcast, you better check and see who's sitting on that pew with you screaming hallelujah. Everybody in that church ain't saved. We got a bunch of bubbas and bubettes, don't we? Sit yourself down. Don't have me come over there. Are you with me? Watch this. Uh, back into the study guide here. For the individual, that's in the church. Ain't no sin in God's body in the church, his bride that he's returning on the clouds for. No. We help each other. We're there for each other. We love each other. We strengthen each other. We encourage each other. We care for each other. Iron, sharpening iron. We are there through each other's struggles to help each other stay up, to get rid of the sin in our lives. And we can pray. We can pray hard for each other. You see? But if there's those that are present that are just going to continue to be wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing, throw them out. Get rid of them. But what about their souls? That is a personal choice on their part. You ain't saving nobody's soul. You're leading them to Christ. When they reject Christ, they reject the salvation for their souls. There's nothing you can do about that. God does not give any of us the power to change anyone. He'll give you the power to change yourself 
if you want to change, but if you don't, there's no deliverance. That's what deliverance is. Getting the junk out of our trunk to make us light for the flight. Getting that sin out of our lives that we can be powerful warriors for Christ's kingdom and live the way he has commanded us to live an obedient life dictated by this powerful, life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word of God. Glory be to God. But you ain't going to let that individual take down this whole body of Christ. Put him out. Now the study guide goes into the individual, okay? For the individual, any relationship, practice, or activity that leads to sin should be stopped. Jesus says it would be better to go to heaven with one hand than to hell with both. Sin, of course, affects more than our hands. It affects our mind and heart, and it will affect your eternal destiny as well. Glory be to God. Had to throw that in in the study guide. Sometimes it don't hit as hard as I feel it should. I have another one for verses 12 through 14. Just as a shepherd is concerned enough about one lost sheep to go search the hills for it, so God is concerned about every human being he has created. He does not want anyone to be destroyed. And we read that in Second Peter 3 and 9. If you come in contact with children in your neighborhood who need Christ, steer them toward him by your example, your words, and your acts of kindness. Boy, study guide trying to preach up in here today. Amen. We're going to stop there at verse 14. So we'll pick it up tomorrow at verse 15. Now this, the rest of this chapter is mostly red. And so is 19. We're going to be in the red for a while. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. These words coming out of his mouth, off of his lips, they're life-saving. We need these words, and we need to take them to heart. Amen? But how will you know his words unless you read Here's the word. That's why we always say, read your word, read your word, read your word. And Lord Jesus, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, for this powerful, 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 life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging words that you blessed us with today. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bury them in our hearts, Lord, that we'll never forget them. Bury them with like barbed wire, Holy Ghost fire, branded in into our heart where they can remain always throughout eternity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much and you drew them here today with purpose. Lord, they need a miracle of healing in their bodies. Doctors have told them they got a condition, a disease, a sickness, an illness. A diagnosis is in their bodies. They want to do so much for you and your kingdom and your people, but their bodies won't move like they used to move, Lord. They're in pain, Lord. So much pain due to whatever's going wrong in their bodies. And there may be multiple places in their bodies affected. Oh, they need a touch. And as we've been reading in this gospel, this powerful gospel, Father, everybody gets healed. Everybody gets healed. It is your will 
that your children be healed and delivered and made whole and on fire in doing for you and your kingdom. We know your heart. We know your will. We know your way, and we know what you're up to. You brought them here to do a miracle of healing in their bodies. Now, some of them, Father, have been told what they have, there is no cure, but we know you. There's not a disease, a sickness, a condition, or a diagnosis that can hit anyone's body that you can't get rid of, that you can't fix, that you can't heal. You are our cure all. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Some have been told names so long, Lord, they can't even spell them, let alone pronounce it. They got to use initials to describe to others what the doctor told them that they got. But we know that they're is no name, no matter how long that name is, no name above the name of Jesus. And we declare the name of Jesus right now from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet in every area of your bodies, whole and complete. You are healed right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much, and you drew them here today with purpose. Satan got them bound, Lord. Got them tied up a yoke around their neck and he's choking them out, Lord, and they can't do for you like they want to. Strongholds in their lives they can't get free of. Chained up by the enemy they are and fight as they might and some of them with all their strength for years still can't loose those chains. But Lord, we know your heart. We know your love. We know your will. We know your way. We know your power. The power of the anointing that breaks every yoke. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. <laughs> Isaiah 10, 27. It is the anointing that breaks the yokes. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing upon this ministry, upon my life. It could be this drug or that drug or this drug or that drug. It could be a combination of drugs and you just can't stop. Try as you might. It could be alcohol. You just can't stop. It could be gambling, losing everything. Just can't stop. It could be pornography, lying, stealing, cheating, womanizing, committing adultery, fornicating, living some sexual lifestyle you know darn well you never should have attached yourself to. It could be a prescription and you're in the battle of your own life trying to get off of it. It could be a prescription. If you stop taking it, it will take your life. Lord, they've, Satan has so many traps and you might be saying to yourself, all of the above is okay. The anointing breaks every yoke, and we declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every yoke broken right now in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. Every stronghold torn down right now in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. Every chain ripped off right now in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. And you are now free. Glory be to God. Enjoy your freedom. Those who Christ have set free are free indeed. No withdrawals. No monkey on your back. And no regrets in Jesus. Precious and mighty name, free to live this word, become this word, walk this word, be a walking gospel with nothing holding you back ever again in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. And some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much, and you drew them here today with purpose. Sing God. Got them bound, Lord. Prisoners they are. Not necessarily in an institution, but in their emotions, their hearts, their spirits, their minds. They've been told they got PTSD, anxiety, depression, all kind of stuff. But, Lord, we know your heart. 
We know your love. We know your will. We know your way. We know your, your breaking power. And we know what you up to. You want them free too. And we declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, ADHD gone right now in Jesus' name. PTSD gone right now in Jesus' name. Depression gone right now in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now in Jesus' name. Autism gone right now in Jesus' name. Bipolar, tripolar, quadpolar, I don't know how many polars they got, all that gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Schizophrenia gone right now in Jesus' name. Paranoia gone right now in Jesus' name. Multiple personality disorder gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. I'm out of names. I don't know any other names. If they gave you any other name or names... All that gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name, and you too are free. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Enjoy your freedom. And some of these, Lord Jesus, that you love and adore so much, are in a very dark place, and they don't want to come out. They went into the dark place to get away from the horrors, the terrorizing, the abuse, the rapes. They can't take any more pain. Their heart broke. Their hearts have been broken so many times, Lord, they can't take another heartbreak. They're hiding on purpose, but we know you, Lord. We know your love. We know your compassion. We know you want their lives lit up with you as well. And Lord, you're the light of the world that men would not stumble. The glory of God that lit this earth the first day when God said, let there be light days before the sun, moon, and stars were even created. You're the bright morning star, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on each and every one of them. Go to them now, Lord, and light that place up with you. It ain't dark no more. Lend down that nail-pierced hand. Help them out of those corners and onto their feet and into your loving and caring, forgiving and all-powerful arms. Oh, Lord, grab them, hold them, hug them, squeeze them tight. Don't let them go, Lord. Whisper in their ear, I got you, child. Walk them out of that place into a new life lit up by you. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. And the church said together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Glory. <laughs> hey, we'll be back tomorrow. Till we do, do us a teeny weeny tiny little favor. Have a good day. A nice day, a wonderful day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans. We'll see you tomorrow.